The sage continued. The jiva knows and experiences the external world with the externalized senses and the inner dream world with the inner senses. When the senses are engaged in the experience of the external world, then the field of internal notions is vague and unclear. But when the senses are turned within, then the jiva experiences the world within himself with the greatest clarity. When we're awake, we tend to more or less ignore what we experienced in our dreams. But when we're in our dreams, they're incredibly vivid. They're at least as vivid as our waking state. There is no contradiction in this world appearance whatsoever at any time. It is as one sees it is. We make this distinction between the internal and the external, but whatever we experience, we normally assume it's reality, whether we're in the waking state or the dream state. Therefore, when the eyes are extroverted, the jiva experiences the world as if it were outside in the infinite consciousness. So we experience the world as outside, but even when the senses are introverted, even when we're seeing with our dream eyes, we still experience it as outside. The aggregate of the senses of hearing, touch, sight, smell, taste and desire is known as the jiva, which is of the nature of pure consciousness endowed with life force. This is the infinite consciousness entering into a particular mode. You could describe it as the generic individual, one with the senses, with the desire, desire for understanding and security and all the rest of it. And it's got this motivation, this motivating force, the life force. But it's of the nature of pure consciousness, just as a wave is of the nature of the ocean. This jiva exists therefore in everything, everywhere, has everything, and hence he experiences everything, everywhere. So this is what's happening with me, with you, and with everybody else, and with everything else. Now all this is by way of turning to, cons to a consideration of what is called the humours. There are three substances which according to ancient folklore, condition our character. So this jiva will have a particular character dependent on the balance of the humours. The three humours are phlegm, bile and wind. And they're dependent on what we eat. So this is one of these passages which doesn't seem particularly useful. But there is a fundamental point. Our character is dominated by particular moods. And these moods are what we need to navigate through in order to return to realization of ourself and in order to remain in realization of ourself. These are our moods. And our moods are affected by all kinds of things. And you'd have to look at your own experience to, to see to what extent your mood is affected by what you eat. I think most people's diet is actually a reflection of their poor self-image and it's a way of flagellating themselves or causing themselves damage. So here the jiva is associated with the ojas, the vital essence. When the jiva, the ojas or the vital essence, is filled with phlegm, and the Sanskrit word here is sleshma or kappa, one of the three humours that constitute the vital essence of the body, he sees its effects there and then. He sees himself rising from the ocean of milk. He sees the moon floating in the sky. He sees lakes and lotuses, gardens and flowers, rejoicing and festivals, in which women sing and dance, feasts with a lot of food and drink, rivers flowing into the ocean, huge palaces painted white, fields covered with fresh snow, parks with deer resting in them, and mountain ranges. That's a surprise, isn't it? 
So there's phlegm, which doesn't sound particularly appealing. It's got all these beautiful images associated with it. Ideally, the humours are supposed to be in a particular balance, and if wind or bile prevail, then your health is a little bit dodgy. But apparently when phlegm prevails, then this is quite good. Phlegm comes under the influence of the planet Jupiter, and Jupiter is jovial in aspect. So the one, in, the one which is filled with phlegm sees the world as this source of wonderful experiences. So this is the mood of somebody who's dominated by phlegm. Everything is beautiful and festive. When the jiva is filled with bowel, pitta, he experiences its effects there and then. He sees flames which are beautiful and which produce sweating of the nerves and which throw up black smoke which darkens the sky, suns which are dazzling in their brilliance and scorching in their heat, oceans and mist rising from them, impassable forests, mirages with swans swimming in them. He sees himself running along the road in fear and covered with hot dust. He sees the earth scorched dry and hot. Whatever the eyes see, they see everything on fire. Even the clouds rain fire, and because of this pervasive fire, everything looks brilliant. So this isn't unlike the cosmic dissolution, and we'll come back to that in the next video. When the jiva is filled with wind, vata, which is another humour, he experiences the following effects. He sees the world as if it is new. He sees himself and even rocks and mountains flying. Everything revolves and rotates, flying angels and celestials. The earth and all that is in it quakes. He sees himself as having fallen into a blind well, or into a dreadful calamity, or as standing perilously on top of a tree of great height, or a mountain peak. So we've got to remember that this sage is in the ojas of another human being, and this is what he's experiencing directly, is the humours. And, and these humours reflect his subsequent experiences. Your reality is determined by your mood. So what determines your mood?